start with a blank page. We're just going to say new, and here's where you have to make some decisions. Not only, of course, the name of your document, which you can do here or when you save it, but more importantly, the profile. What kind of art are you creating? Is the art for print, for web? I mean, it's going to go on a website. Is it for a device? Maybe it's going into an application on your, you know, that you're going to create for your iPad or your Android. Is it for video or film? Maybe. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, just give me a standard web document using the default 960 by 5, 960 by 560. And the other thing that we're going to talk about a little bit later are artboards. We're not going to jump into that right away. But we'll click OK, and there's my artwork drawing objects. So if I just draw, you know, with my hand not really holding down any modifier keys, I'm going to get a rectangle, or if I'm really careful, maybe I can get a perfect square. But when I let go, that is now an object on my page. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a second one. And of course, now I have two objects on the page overlapping each other. Four, but I'm just going to pick this object up first to show you the difference. So I can pick it up, I can pick up this one and move it around, pick up this one and move it around. Those are objects on the screen. Stroke and fill. Now, when I first created these objects, my last stroke and fill, when my fill was white and my stroke was black. So that means that this rectangle has a white color in it and has a black stroke around it, just like the one that's already on the page. So if I say remove the fill for that selected object, now I can see through it. I can see the rectangle behind it. If I say give it a different uh, fill, let's do this, I can choose a different color, and now it's got that color on it, but it still has the black stroke. I can click and toggle back and forth between these two to change whichever one I want. Or I can just go up to the control panel and change them individ individually. So I can say, well, give me a uh, orange stroke on that and make the stroke thicker so we can actually see it. So even if I go back here to the fill, I can say that I want to lower the opacity of that fill so that it now becomes transparent. So, stroke, fill. The fill is the inside, the stroke is the outside. Now let's talk about um, ways of selecting. You have two selection tools. The easiest way to explain this is your selection tool is when you want to select an object and you want to pick up that object and move it around. So no matter where I click on these objects, I can click on them and move them around. Now, you also notice that when it's selected, I have these handles. These handles allow me to quickly resize or reshape it. If I want to keep it proportional, then I would hold down the shift key, and that will reshape it with its, or resize it with its current proportions as I pick it up and move it around or grab one of the corner handles to size. So that's what your selection tool does. Now, let me deselect, which basically means click off of it onto the canvas, onto nothing, and then I'm going to switch to the direct selection tool. And think of the direct selection tool as allowing me to directly manipulate a part of that object. So if I go to my direct selection tool, it will auto-highlight um, any of the points that make up this object. So there are four points that make up a rectangle or a square, one on each corner. So when I click one of these points, it is now selected. The other three are white. The one that's selected is blue. That means I can now reshape this object by grabbing the points and directly manipulating them. So if I go back to the selection tool, now I'm picking up the entire object, moving it around. I am, uh, if I come off to the side here, I can rotate that object. I can do all kinds of things to the object as an object, but I'm no longer directly manipulating individual points or paths. Now let's go to number five, combining shapes. Now there are um, a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to delete what I've got here. And we're going to switch drawing from the rectangle tool to the ellipse tool. And I'm going to uh, teach you a couple things right off the bat here. First of all, we're going to um, go back to no fill. And we'll go to, um, actually, we'll just set our defaults. We'll go back to black and white. And then we'll say no fill. Okay. And if you want to constrain your squares, your circles, your triangles, whatever you're drawing with, to a perfect shape, hold down the shift key. That will force it to be a perfect circle. So I cannot distort that to an oval while I'm holding down the shift key. When I'm ready to let go, you always let go of your mouse first, and then you can let go of the shift key. Okay, so now that I've got this circle, I want to draw another circle. Now, Illustrator has what are called smart guides, so things that light up as I come around and touch different, or not even touching, but hover over different areas. So if I start at this point um, at the top here, and I start drawing a perfect circle, I hold down my shift key, when I get to the center point of this uh, shape, it will highlight and let go. So, oops, let me undo that. I let go too soon. Uh, but it will highlight and let go to let me know that, hey, you're in the center if you let go right now. Okay, so same thing here. If I hover over this point and draw another one, hold down the shift key, and when I get near the center and let go, I know that that circle is a perfect circle from the bottom of the circle to the center, from the top of the circle to the center. Now, I want to select all of these. Let's go back to our selection tool. Let's just simply drag a selection around all three objects. And now I could use uh, basic align functions to align these objects. So I just brought up my alignment panel from the top here, and we're just going to align the centers. So now I know that um, those are perfectly aligned from the center point. Now that they are perfectly aligned, I'm going to grab my ellipse tool one more time. And now I want to draw a perfect circle from the center of this top circle. If I hold down and start drawing, it will do it from the center in the direction I draw out in. But if I hold down my Option key or Alt key and hold down my Shift key, I will have a perfect circle from the center point. Now, a lot of times we draw things that we want to have another one, another circle, five circles, ten circles, whatever, and we want them to be exactly the same, but we don't have to keep drawing them over and over again. So I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key with my selection tool and drag the one I just did. And that will give me a perfect shape Perfect selection, perfect drag, duplicate of the one I just did because I use my guides that light up automatically. So now I've got these shapes here, and I'm going to select them all, again with the selection tool, and we're going to combine them in together and to get it like a yin-yang. So one of the new tools to combine shapes with is the Shape Builder tool. And once you make a selection, the Shape Builder tool will automatically identify anything you hover over as a potential shape that can be combined. So if I want to combine this circle with the bigger circle underneath, I just click and drag between the two, and that will combine the two. So that's giving me the beginnings of my yin and yang. And again, we'll do the same thing over here, drag, and that is combine the two. So now those are, without me having to draw a perfect circle oval-ish swishy thing, <laughs> it just did it for me by combining the two shapes. Now I want to use the one on top 
which is just a black stroke with no fill on top of another black stroke with no fill. I want to actually use it to cut out the shape underneath. So using the same shape builder tool, all I do is hold down my option or alt key, and you'll notice that instead of a plus sign, I get a minus symbol on the tool. So now if I just click, that will cut out that shape underneath. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, the next thing we need to do is start filling. So we'll use our selection tool, and we'll select uh, the one on the bottom here, and we'll just fill that with black. Oops, didn't select only the one. There we go. And we'll fill that with black now. There we go. And I uh, will select this one. And how am I filling it? Well, I'm using a, a, a shortcut. I'm basically taking the black stroke and toggling it using this little curved arrow, which says switch them. So instead of a no fill black stroke, make it a black fill with no, no stroke. So I'm just basically cheating and just toggling the two. So now it's a black circle with no stroke and a white, <laughs> or I'm sorry, a black shape at the bottom with no stroke, just by toggling those two. So that was a quick way to combine multiple objects. And if you're just looking for something simpler, um, you know, maybe you don't want to create a yin yang. If you just even took something like that, and then you took something like this, and you just said, hey, you know, I can't draw a shape like that freehand. It's just easier if I select those now and use my shape builder and just combine. Oops. There we go. Shape builder and just combine them. So now that shape has now been created. Okay, and again, I can reshape these because now it's one thing. Or use my direct selection tool, which would be a better thing to use in this case, to just combine the top now. So, and of course, since this is one shape, no matter how I drew it, I can always rotate it and get the look that I'm looking for. All right, so that is combining uh, shapes. And again, once they're combined, they work as one piece, just as if you'd drawn it that way. So even if you want to direct select to directly manipulate any portion of it, you can. So you can directly manipulate any of this to reshape it to your heart's content because now you have access to the points um, that you've drawn. The pen tool is basically for drawing straight lines by clicking point to point, or, and by the way, we want to give that a stroke and a fill. There we go. Um, or by drawing curves by dragging out these points. So you can create or trace around pretty much anything with the pen tool. If we go into the line tool, the line tool is for drawing lines. And those lines can have um, any, any kind of, of uh, here, let's go to the weight here. They can have any kind of thickness to them. They can also, if you go to your stroke panel, uh, let's expand that out. There we go. Uh, if we show our options here, they can even have arrowheads. And you can um, customize the endings as well. So you can create lots of cool lines, paths, whatever, to draw your particular illustration. Shape tools, rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star, flare. Um, Pencil is one that I would have used back in the day to kind of maybe freeform my way around something that may be easier to do than using the pen tool. But Illustrator has introduced and enhanced a couple of new tools. So let's go to the blob brush because I just like the fact that it um, it's kind of giving me here. Let's look at the outlines here. It's giving me a filled path. So instead of the line tool or the pencil tool just being a solid stroke, this is giving me a path that can be filled. All right, so, uh, and it can be expanded there, therefore. So let's go back to, uh, by the way, that was Command-Y for outline, Command-Y or Control-Y for um, to turn it off. All right, if we double-click on the blob brush options, we can control the size, we can control the shape, we can control the angle. You can also set these to be random or pressure sensitive. And now I can get a different kind of stroke, including the one that I use perhaps for a signature. So blob brush is great for freeform drawing. And again, the advantage here is that your object becomes a path that can be manipulated and adjusted as needed. And last but not least, the one that I probably use more than any of them is the paintbrush. And the reason I say more than any of them is because you can have custom brushes. So again, I'm not an artist. I'm not really going to draw a lot with this tool. However, um, I could. But more importantly, if we go to the brushes panel, there are some basic default brushes here. So the basic brush is the one that we just drew. The uh, charcoal brush is kind of cool. Uh, and next, bristle brushes that kind of give it the illusion of being painted, even though those are still vectors, those aren't pixels. But if you, you say, hey, I, you know, that's still drawing and I don't draw, then you can load up different brush libraries. So if we go to the flyout menu from the brushes panel, we can go to open brush library, where there are a lot of cool libraries that come with Illustrator. So for example, if I go to decorative banners and seals, uh, this is a panel, I can add any one of these I want, but let's just click on one. And now, hey, I need a banner. There, done. I need a different kind of banner that goes that way. Done. So these are actual brush strokes. I need a seal. Done. So I'm clicking in some cases and dragging in others to get my seal. There we go. So these are all brushes that I can use that are built in. And if we go back to the brushes library, oops, open brush library, uh, there are also cool bristle brushes that you can use. And here, let's do one more. Brush library, let's go to artistic. Artistic, there are all kinds of borders too, but artistic calligraphic. And these are all the different ones that I have open. So you can have at it. Have a good time doing all of these cool brushes. Now let's talk about how to trace. So we're going to go to our file menu in place. And it's going to let me go to my hard drive and grab anything I want. I'm going to go grab the green leaf JPEG. So JPEG right off the bat lets me know that that is, um, that is pixel based. That is not vector. So when I choose place, there it is. It loads it onto the page for me. I can scale it, of course. So let's go ahead and scale that down. Holding down my shift key to maintain proportions. But if we zoom in on that now, we can see. Let's zoom in some more here. We can start to see the anti-aliasing around the edge because these are pixels. This is not vector work. Now, what I want from this is an actual vector rendition of it. Now, of course, I could put that on a layer, lower the opacity, make a new layer on top of it, and start tracing around each leaf until I've got it traced. Or I can use Illustrator's 
tracing abilities to trace this for me. So let's close the brushes panel. Let's go up to the window menu and come down to the image trace panel. So with image trace, new in CS6, it's been enhanced to be a lot faster, easier, 64-bit, all the great things we want, and to give us much better results. So the preset right now is on default. I can choose any one of these presets or adjust it to my heart's content. So let's start with uh, just simply, let's actually just do low fidelity photo. So what it's doing right now is analyzing the photo for me. I don't have to do anything else. And it's figuring out what it looks like and tracing it. Done. That was it. If we now zoom in on this, this is now vector. I can make this as big as I want it to be, and it will never lose any quality. I can scale this to my heart's content. I now have a vector rendition of those leaves just by clicking an option in image trace. If I want um, maybe a grayscale, just do shades of gray. It will analyze it again because it has to look at the shading and colors from the original photo. And then it will start to give me shades of gray. So again, zooming in on that, that is my new vector that is now grayscale. I could also say... Just give me, actually, there's a preset for it. Just give me, um, let's do line art. Actually, it's going to do it, but I want a different one. That's not the one I want. I want silhouettes. So silhouettes just basically makes it into black. Now, you know, no shades of gray, just black and white. Okay, so now that I've done that, if I want to actually now go into my vectors that it created and get to the individual points and paths that I can manipulate, like I did with the direct selection tool, then there's one more button I'm going to press at the top here called expand. When I expand it, that's saying, okay, take what you that beautiful thing you drew and now let me mess with it. So now that that's been expanded, I can go into my swatches, which is where we save colors, and I can make that, oops, undo. Let's uh, double click on this to get into it. There we go. And now we can make it whatever color we want. Okay, why might you trace something other than the obvious benefit of now it's vectoring, it's resolution independent? If I zoom out, I'm just pressing Command minus, by the way, uh, and Control minus on Windows, it will show me six individual panels. So these panels would be pages in another document, like InDesign, or artboards is what they're called in Illustrator. And you can have multiple artboards. Remember when we said, give it a new document, how many artboards do you want? That's saying, I want to start off with two, three, four, five, ten, twenty artboards. And the artboards will be, when you do it that way, they will all be the same size by default, but you can make a new artboard or you can change an artboard using the artboard tool. So the artboard tool allows me to go in and draw a new artboard. So now I've added page seven. I can make that new artboard whatever size I want. I can also give it a preset. So I can say make that a letter size artboard. And now I have a new page to create on. All right, so now let's talk about layers. All right, so new, a uh, couple new objects here. And you see right off the bat on the layers panel, it started with layer one. But the layers here are unlike Photoshop layers in that they have sub layers. So when I, and here, let's fill this one with something different so we can see it better. So when I twirl this down, I will see both objects. Here, let's select this one and make it a different color so we can see that one as well. And I see both objects on the sub layers of layer one. And what's cool is you can control the individual objects. So I can turn that sub layer off even though I didn't turn layer one off. If I make a new layer, so now I have a layer two. I, of course, if layer two is selected and I start creating things on layer two, they will automatically be on layer two. Here, let's make it totally different. There we go. But um, if I want to move something between layers, I can. So I can turn layer two off, completely off. Of course, it's completely off. If I say, hey, I want this blue circle, this blue object to be on layer two, I can target it by selecting, here, clicking the circle, so now it's targeted. And then I can drag the little blue rectangle up to layer two. So now, layer two contains those two objects. Layer one only contains the one object. So that's how layers work inside, uh, in a nutshell, how they work inside Illustrator. Well, if I go to file and save, that's going to let me save it as an Illustrator file, as an EPS, as a PDF, or template. I'm not even going to confuse you with these other two, or these other three or four right now. Just know that Illustrator, EPS, PDF are going to be your most commonly used options. Now, Illustrator, that's a simple one to explain. That means I'm going to work on it again. Save it as an Illustrator document, close it, come back tomorrow, open up the Illustrator document, everything's there, keep working. 